Hello, and welcome to the League of Women Voters of Portland Forum for November 3rd. The ballot issue is 26217, which the voters pamphlet describes as, shall the city charter be amended to authorize a new independent community police oversight board to investigate complaints against the Portland police and impose discipline. My name is Linda Mather. I'm the forum moderator for the League of Women Voters of Portland. The League is a nonpartisan organization dedicated to making democracy work. We believe democracy works best when voters are informed about issues and engaged in their communities. We're presenting the forum to give Portland voters the opportunity to learn more about the ballot issue. Speaking for the measure is Joanne Hardesty. Speaking against the measure is Daryl Turner. Because of COVID-19 pandemic restrictions, we cannot hold in-person ballot measures as we used to. Therefore, the two spokespeople and I are participating from our own locations. We are grateful support from the Carol and Velma Sailing Foundation, the League of Women Voters of Portland Education Fund, the Weiss Foundation, the Sarah Fewing Fund, and our media partner, Metro East Community Media. Now, for our guidelines, because as always, time is a restriction, each of the spokespeople will give a two-minute opening statement. They will then have 90 seconds to answer questions, and then they'll have a two-minute closing. We will alternate throughout so that each of them has a chance to go first, either on the closing, the opening, or the question. And I've asked and expect them, of course, to adhere to our time limits. And as they predetermined, uh, Ms. Hardesty will start us off. So, Joanne, if you would start with your opening set statement, please. Uh, thank you very much. And first, let me thank the League of Women Voters, who has consistently been a strong voice around our democracy. Um, uh, ballot measure uh, 26217 is a uh, model of true community oversight of policing in the city of Portland. Uh, it is so critical that voters support this measure uh, because as voters are seeing every single day on the street of Portland, um, there is not accountability built into our current system. Um, I, as a community member, have been working on this issue for over 30 years. I have worked on a variety of task force, including one put together by then Mayor Vera Katz uh, that was put together uh, to be placed PIAC, which was the last police oversight board prior to uh, the current one that we have, IPR. And I can tell you that for over 30 years, the community has asked for something very specific. They've asked for an oversight board that had the ability to compel testimony, that had a budget that was sufficient to do investigations, and to have civilian investigators uh, hired to investigate complaints of police misconduct. The last thing they've asked for is the ability to implement discipline. If we are going to truly have community police officers, they must be accountable to the community that they are sworn to protect and serve. What we've seen over the last 120 days is some really brutal police actions uh, that were over the top as compared to how communities were standing up uh, in their desire for a racially just community. It's kind of ironic that since the community has been coming out in mass demanding uh, police accountability and racial justice when it comes to policing in Portland, what we've seen is enhanced violence at the hands of people sworn to protect and serve. Um, and so I have no doubt that Portlanders will appreciate and want this ballot measure. Uh, please vote yes, 26-217 uh, on your November 3rd ballot. Thank you. Now we'll have time for more elucidation on the questions, but Daryl, your opening, please. And I think you're mute. There you go, almost. There you go. Uh, my name is Officer Daryl Turner. I'm the president of the Portland Police Association. I've been a police officer for 29 and a half years. I've spent all those 29 and a half years in the city of Portland, serving the citizens of Portland and the residents of Portland and the businesses of Portland. 
uh, but my history even goes back farther than that. Uh, I was born and raised in Newark, New Jersey. I'm 61 years old. I am a child of the civil rights movement. Uh, I remember in 1967 when I was eight years old, we had the riots in Newark, New Jersey. We had the riots because police officers had beaten up a cab driver after he had argued with him over a ticket. I remember the six or seven days of rioting, burning, looting. I remember the National Guards, the track vehicles driving up and down the street. I remember the, uh, the, the sound of uh, shooting and shots being fired by uh, citizens, by police officers, and maybe even by National Guardsmen. Um, at the time, my mother is a single mom raising her two sons, my younger brother, myself. Um, I stayed with my grandmother while my mother worked night shift. And uh, during those riots, my grandmother thought it was smarter for my younger brother and I to sleep in the bathtub, which was a old clawfoot cast iron bathtub in her, in her apartment. So I just remember that. And I remember watching the city burn. I remember the chaos. I remember growing up in the place with empty lots, with burned out buildings that still, even when I was 18 years old, those lots were still empty and burnt out. So I understand the uh, importance of police accountability. And I understand the importance of reform and the evolution of policing uh, and the accountability to the citizens that we serve. Thank you. Um, so if I may ask you, Eric, the first question, is there a need for a solution to the problem that this measure seeks to address? Why or why not? And I, and I, and I think we have several layers of oversight. We have, the, uh, we have IPR, the Independent Police Review. We have the CRC, the Citizens Review Committee. We have uh, the Internal Affairs Division. Um, we also have other arms that uh, make recommendations uh, on different ways to uh, show accountability for the Police Bureau. And I think those are viable. Those are citizen requested uh, arms of, uh, of accountability that we already have and that work. Sure, they need to be updated. Sure, there needs to be some reforms. There's evolution in everything you do as technologies change, philosophies change, and other things change. There's always going to be the need to change. This is a time for need to change. There's a message out there of racial equity and social justice that can transcend our world, not just our country, not just our city, but our world, and it needs to be heard. Um, but I disagree with uh, Commissioner Hardesty about the rioting and the burning and the uh, violence that we've seen in this city over 120 days. Um, police officers have shown great restraint over those 120 days. And if you see some of the things that are happening in other cities when they riot and when they loot, compared to what you see in Portland, you'll see there's a vast difference, and that's not happening here. Thank you. Uh, Joanne? Is there a need for the solution to the problem in this measure? The community has been demanding uh, this measure for the 30 years that I've been working on police reform here uh, through a whole host of different avenues. Um, yes, we have uh, IPR, uh, but as most of the public knows, uh, the IPR really does not have the trust of the community. And I would say not a lot of trust in police and the police force either. Uh, before the DOJ came to town, IPR actually threw out 60% of the complaints they received. Um, and even today, they refuse to take complaints about police violence at protests. And so, yes, we need the system desperately. We need the community to have oversight of community police officers. Yes, we need it. The public has demanded it. They demand it every night. And uh, what I've seen on video from police does not look like restraint in any way, shape, or form. The community has a right to hold police officers accountable for their behavior in our community. Joanne, stay with this for another question, which is what budgetary oversight provisions and protections are in the proposal? And so uh, what we're putting in the proposal is merely what goes into the charter. Um, of course, there will be audits of the budget for the new oversight board. Today, the proposal is that they have up to 5% of the Portland Police budget. They will have professional staff. So the volunteer community members will not be making doing the investigations. They will have the ability to hire professional staff to conduct their business. 
uh, and they will be audited because it is city money and there will be a requirement that they are audited on an annual or semi or every two year basis. Uh, all those final details will be worked out with the commission that we will put in place in January to actually work out the final details of the of the oversight board. Okay, and Daryl, your take on the budgetary oversight? Um, well, I will say this right now, like I said, with the independent police review, with the uh, citizen review committee, uh, they have they have a budget, they have audits, uh, they have civilian employees. These are not police officers. These are not uh, people who work for the police bureau. These are trained investigators uh, from all walks of life, from all different professions in life that uh, are actually trained investigators to do these investigations. And even though Commissioner Hardesty wants people to believe that uh, they're actually declining uh, several of the protest uh, complaints, they aren't. They're, they are inundated and saturated right now with complaints. I personally go to a lot of those interviews to represent our members. And I know that for a fact, they are saturated with complaints um, from just from the protests, let alone from, uh, from uh, all the other complaints that we may get in uh, from just a regular number of complaints we get in from patrol functions. So they are doing their job. They're also getting help from our internal affairs division. Um, what's it's budgeted is audited. And instead of s spending that money on something that has no structure, has no fabric to it, that Commissioner Hardesty is proposing, that money should be put back into the police bureau for the safety of Portlanders and the safety of uh, everybody involved in peaceful protests. Okay, Eric, a different question. How can the voters be satisfied that previously unrepresented communities will be included in the development of the oversight board? Well, I think the stakeholders hadn't come to the table. Uh, Commissioner Hardesty chose a, a group of people, I believe, to help her form this uh, uh, ballot measure, uh, but they weren't all the stakeholders at the, they, they weren't all the stakeholders at the table. There were stakeholders from law enforcement, there were stakeholders from different communities in the city. Um, I think she surrounded herself with people that would agree uh, with a certain uh, mind thought, a narrow mind thought, and not a broader mind thought and thinking out of the box. The Portland Police Bureau is one of the most progressive police bureaus in the country, not just in its thinking and, and training and, and thought, but also in our, our oversight. And uh, you won't find many agencies in the country with as much oversight and as thorough oversight as the Portland Police Bureau. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, yes, uh, you know, t this week the city council, uh, actually last week, uh, had uh, the seventh report from the OIR group, um, uh, and they actually investigate deaths in custody. I know uh, the League of Women Voters review these reports regularly, um, and I would say that um, any community member who wanted to find out why we need more oversight of police. I, I think uh, Mr. Turner does a disservice to the public when he says that only people who agreed with me. There were four city attorneys involved in the development of the ballot measure, three outside attorneys. We had uh, three or four community meetings with a whole diverse group of community members. Uh, and, and, um, and all of us came to the same conclusion that now was the right time to move a truly independent police oversight board. Um, it is amazing that since Kendra James was killed in 2003, 44 people have lost their lives at the hands of the police and none of the 65 officers have been found to be guilty of any wrongdoing. Um, and it works that way when police investigate themselves. This will have an opportunity for the community to really understand whether or not police are doing the job we hired them to do. And that's why 26-217 is such a vital part of transforming policing in the city of Portland. Um, let me follow through with you with one of the other questions, which is the measure itself states that it shall not include current law enforcement employees and immediate family members. In this configuration, how will the opinions and judgments of law enforcement officers be included in the judgments of the board? Uh, they will certainly be, law enforcement will be invited to provide expert testimony, but my experience and many other community members' experience has been when you add law enforcement to a table, they tend to take over the table or they're obstructionists to true reform. 
uh, reform happens when a community demands reform. It never happens at the hands of the police. And so the community is telling us very specifically what they want. And as an elected leader, it is my job to give them the venue so that they can get the kind of policing that they want. They don't want the policing we have today. Okay, thank you. And Daryl, your place for law enforcement in the uh, configuration that's proposed? Well, if you look at all the uh, the, the, the standard um, um, oversights of other, other jobs, uh, the medical board is made up of, of doctors, the, uh, the bar is made up of lawyers, uh, and, and, and even for judges, uh, those type of things. You have to have subject matter experts on those boards to be able to, to, to be explain tactics, to be able to explain training, to be able to explain a plethora of, of information that you just can't get in one shot from a subject matter expert when you bring them in. That needs to be somebody on there who can explain things to people. But also, uh, Commissioner Hardesty, uh, what, she, what, she, uh, what she forgets is that uh, law enforcement was never brought into this. The chief of police was never brought into this. Um, nobody from our community was ever brought into this. She treats us like we're dishonest people, that we're just going around using force as we will without any kind of reasoning, without any kind of tactical skills, without any kind of training. And that's just not true. She, uh, she, she, she treats us like we're, you know, going out there and roguely just assaulting people and people of color, and that's just not true. If you look at the city of Portland, you look at the, uh, the shootings that we've had, the officer-involved shootings that we had, there is, a, there is a civilian oversight that actually judges those. It's called a grand jury. It's all civilians. It's no police officers on those grand juries, no law enforcement on those grand juries and they make a decision or not whether an officer's involved shooting was valid or not. Okay, as we look at the ballot measure, as we both know, there are positives and negatives embedded in everything. So Daryl, could you tell us, are there some good aspects of this ballot measure that you can see? Um, I looked at the ballot measure and it doesn't have a lot of substance in it. It doesn't have a lot of solutions in it, but what I can tell you is, Yes, there may need, there's time for reform and there's time for evolution. But with the systems we have, uh, instead of spending additional dollars, what we can do is fine tune what we have. Because what we have, it works, it just has to be fine tuned, updated, and, uh, and, uh, and evolutionized. And to go, like I said, with technology, with psychology, with theories, with all those other things that we need to see. And it needs to have a stopgap for the things we see nationwide. Even though it's not happening here in Portland and it will never happen here in Portland, we need to be able to assure the community that there are places there that they can look if something like that were to happen in Portland, which is not going to happen, but if it were, to be able to be assured that it won't happen in Portland. Um, and so uh, I'd say the only good part is it brings awareness to the fact that we do need reforms, but the negative part is obviously it needs to be reforming the systems we have already and not in bringing a new system with no substance, with no proof of uh, being successful, and with no, uh, no ability to guarantee some of the things that uh, Commissioner Hardy, Hardesty says that they're going to accomplish. Okay, and Joanne, the best parts for you? Well, the best part is the community will own oversight of policing. And that is what the community has been asking for for quite some time. If things were as rosy as uh, Mr. Turner alleges they were, then tens of thousands of people would not be continuously taken to the street. I wouldn't receive 75,000 emails asking me to defund the police by $50 million. People wouldn't still be coming to budget meetings demanding that we defund the police. If they were as rosy as, uh, uh, as Mr. Turner states, I would never actually have taken the time to put this ballot measure together. But let me be clear. The ballot measure is the framework that we're putting into the Constitution uh, for the city of Portland. The rest of the work will come after the ballot measure is passed. The commission we put in place will continue to dialogue and conversation all over the city of Portland. And the reason why there are no details is it is the framework that will go into our uh, charter. Um, as you know, the Charter Review Commission also meets in January. So if there's any additional charter changes, we will have the ability to make that happen, as well as the legislature will meet. So we'll have to change the arbitration rule in the legislature. This ballot measure does just what it proposes to do. It puts the framework 
on true community oversight of policing in the city of Portland? Okay, and as I indicated when we started this series of questions, you know, the next one is going to be what's problematic in the ballot measure? Joanne, start us off. Well, uh, I don't see anything that's problematic in the ballot measure. I think the ballot measure actually does work just what it was intended to do. It, it created conversation. It creates community excitement. And the next 18 months after the ballot measure passes is when the real hard work happens. If Mr. Turner wants to have input into that process, I'm sure the commission will listen to his perspective and other policing perspectives. But again, that commission will be owned and operated by the community that police are sworn to protect and serve. So, so far, it's the framework for a much larger community conversation, and I look forward to us having that conversation uh, next year. Okay, and Daryl, the problematic parts for you? Well, the, the problematic parts for me is number one, it violates collective bargaining law. Um, anything to do with discipline is a mandatory subject of bargaining. But even more, furthermore than that, Commissioner Hardesty says, well, she's got 75,000 emails or calls uh, from people who say we need a change. There are 660,000 residents in the city of Portland. So that 75,000 people, although they're important and their opinion is important, you still just have a small sampling of the number of people that live in Portland and what they believe and what they think needs to be done. So that's just a small number of it. And again, like I said, this, uh, this ballot measure has no, no substance. Would you go and somebody says, hey, I want you to buy this car. You don't need to drive it. You don't need to sit in it. You just look at it and you pay the money. Millions of dollars will go towards this. And like Commissioner Hardesty says, there is no substance to it. There, is, there are no rules. There is no, there's no, no structure to it whatsoever. It's just a ballot measure to change the, 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 the form of which uh, police complaints will be looked at. And this has no solutions, no, uh, no uh, successful off-ramp to it. Um, and so I say it's just like other things she's put forward. Her street response is not out on the street, but more than $5 million are dedicated to them. And we haven't seen one yet. Uh, yet we've seen murders on the street increase in the last three months when the gun, re reduction violent, uh, gun violence reduction team was uh, disbanded. So uh, the proof is in the pudding. What have you done for me lately? And that, that has not happened. And it will not happen with this ballot measure, unfortunately, for the voters, because they do deserve reform. They do deserve evolution of policing. And they do deserve a voice in this, but it needs to be a unilateral voice. Okay, well, thank you both for responding to all of the questions. It's now time for closing remarks. And Joanne, you're gonna start us off two minute closing. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, and again, thank you to the League of Women Voters and to voters who will be voting in the next 26 days on whether or not you believe you have a right to have oversight of people who are sworn to protect and serve. I, like many of you, have seen over the last 120 plus days and a erosion of trust in police officers in the city of Portland. And we see it because of the brutalization that we've seen happen night in and night out. Um, though Mr. Turner says 75,000 is a drop in the bucket, I have never received 75,000 emails in 21 months of being on the city council. This measure is about putting the framework into the city's charter and then working collectively as a community to make sure that the community's voice is the voice that determines whether or not policing in the city of Portland is working for everyone. Everyone does not experience policing the same but the police have shown over the last 120 plus days that they assume that they don't answer to anyone. They assume they don't answer to the police commissioner or to the state. Um, but we have an opportunity, voters, to actually change that. 26-217 uh, uh, develops the framework. And then the framework is actually what will make sure that the oversight board is overrepresented by people who have experienced policing in Portland and not in a good way. And it will also make sure that we have professional staff. We will be audited. It will be and we will deal with the arbitration issue and the union contract issue. And all of those issues happen in January at the exact same time the commission is working to do to finalize the details of this oversight board. The community has demanded this for 30 years 
and we have never had both the political will and the community will so aligned together to make sure that we have oversight of people who are sworn to protect and serve us. Every night on the street, I don't see people who think they are sworn to protect and serve. I see people who think they're above the law. Thank you. I want your vote. 26-217. Please vote yes. Thank you. And Daryl, your closing statement, please. Uh, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters also, uh, and Commissioner Hardesty for coming on. Um, but uh, this ballot measure, uh, whether it passes or whether it doesn't, will be obviously, uh, there'll be grievances, there'll be legal proceedings, and uh, we'll see what comes of those. Uh, the city knows our history with legal proceedings and grievances. And so I think uh, that will be a telling of the tale. It's a shame that voters are put into the middle of this. Uh, I believe Commissioner Hardesty is looking through the last 120 days to fog a lens. Uh, I believe that the people of Portland see what's really going on. They see the burning. They see the destruction. They see what's going on in the city of Portland right now. We're in a sinkhole like we've never seen before, and this ballot measure will not pull us out. Uh, her trying to demonize and vilify police officers uh, with a ballot measure to, to force it through is not going to work. The only thing that is going to work is to retune the, uh, the, 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 the forms we have now for accountability. Uh, the grand jury is one of those for officer-involved shootings and in-custody deaths. The uh, IPR is another one for police complaints, as well as the CRC, as well as the uh, Internal Affairs uh, Division. Those are all in place and those are all, no, I'm not saying I'm looking through rosy glasses. They always need to be fine-tuned and they always need to be evolve to, to make sure that they're working best for the public as, as they can. But what we've seen in the last 120 days is uh, different from what Commissioner Hardesty has seen, Commissioner from what hundreds of thousands of, of Portlanders have told me they've seen through text messages, through emails, through phone calls, and through just what they're saying. The businesses in this city, the livelihoods of people who work in this city have been damaged over the last 120 days and has not been by the Portland police. You show me one video that you can see that matches up to whatever you see other places in this country, and I will tell you right now, those are being investigated. Those are being looked at, and those are being looked at by independent eyes, not by police eyes. So Commissioner Hardesty's ballot measure, if it passes, it will still face legal, it'll still face legal uh, challenges, and uh, we'll see what happens come January of 2021. Thank you. And thank you to both of you for your participation in this forum. Obviously a difficult issue. Audience, members, please share the forum recording with your friends and families. And I'm going to guess have a good conversation after you do that. Yes. We all need to be informed voters. This recording and others about the ballot measures and other of the races for November are all available on vote411.org through Election Day. Ballots are mailed to all registered voters starting October 14th. As with all Oregon elections, it's mail-in only. Ballots are due by 8 p.m. on Tuesday, November 3rd. Postmarks do not count. Mail your ballot, no postage required, by Tuesday, October 27th to ensure that it's received in time. After October 27th, find a drop-off location near you by again checking vote411.org or your voter's pamphlet. The League of Women Voters is a nonprofit membership organization. We hope this forum was meaningful to you. We welcome you to join, to contribute, or to learn more about the issues at lwbpdx.org. Again, this is Linda Mather for the League of Women Voters of Portland. Thank you for watching. Please be an informed voter. And remember, your vote, everybody's vote, counts. Thank you.